Welcome to Shop Forming Garage. Today working with World Car Auto Group and we are looking at this 2024 CX-90. We have recalls. We got, we got more recalls, really. Recalls, recalls. We got recalls. Let's get to it. So this 2024 CX-90 has recalls on it, three of them. And of course the first one is the 6524A increase in steering effort. And I've done that recall before. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, uh, go and check out that video. I'll put a link up here in the corner. Um, the other two recalls is 6624E, uh, warning light and check engine light set with DTCs, that's for uh, diagnostic trouble codes. And uh, the uh, special service program, it's a SSP D6, which is a VCM programming for the, um, the control camera, the um, vehicle control camera. Um, and uh, let's get into what these recalls are and uh, why do we need them this these are the recalls that we're talking about this uh, 6624 uh, e and the special service program ssp d6 oh what about this 6724 e uh, this recall right here this one sheet right here deals with all three of these and uh, their reprograms but what about this one? This one does not show up on the customer's uh, VIS. Well, it's, this one's actually gonna be taken care of uh, when we do the SSP D6. So what does that deal with? And what do the other ones deal with? Well, let's uh, kind of look through this. So this is the 6724E, and um, it's for uh, sudden braking due to improper software. So apparently the software for the front camera is uh, not right in it and uh, the vehicle's uh, uh, brakes uh, activate suddenly uh, due to false de detection on certain objects at low speeds uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour um, automatic braking system will falsely detect vehicle reflection when approaching an object and it'll just slam on the brake uh, so we're going to do a reprogram that's going to take care of that this is the SSPD6, and uh, this uh, programs the uh, vehicle control module for uh, the the camera, um, a view monitor camera, the, the VMC is actually what it is. Um, and so it has kind of the same thing, Un unintentional warning or braking when backing up. Um, the uh, driver recognition uh, result is uh, not displayed uh, on particular vehicles and the uh, Mazda radar cruise control uh, may reduce speed uh, to match uh, vehicles that basically are not in your lane. So the vehicles that could be in a different lane and right next to you and it tries to match their speed rather than matching the speed of the vehicle ahead of you. So this is going to take care of all that and in doing that it's going to reprogram what this deals with over here too. So that driver recognition uh, result thing, so there's a camera in the vehicle, and in case you didn't know that, there's a camera in the vehicle up front and it is always looking at the driver. So when the driver's driving down the road, the vehicle's watching you. I mean, it's looking, it's just like, you know, I see you, I see you. And uh, what happens is uh, whenever you get into the seat of the vehicle, it um, something that you set up uh, ahead of time and it, as soon as you get into the seat uh, with a key it recognizes you it adjusts the seat uh, position the mirrors you know whatever it brings you a cocktail you know who knows you know it, it knows what kind of drink you drink you know because it recognizes you but for some reason it's not recognizing 
the person that you know belongs to the vehicle and uh, so whenever you get into it it's not adjusting the seat properly and it uh, thinks that you're a guest it, it, it treats you like a regular guest rather than the VIP that you are and so this will fix that it will um, make it you know so that it can recognize you know who it belongs to um, so let's get into this uh, reprogram so the first one that we're going to actually uh, program is the 6624e and uh, what this is going to do is going to reprogram the PCM uh, using the MDAR system and uh, it, it will reprogram the PCM the ECM and the TCM all together now this right here goes through the exact steps that I need to take going through the MDAR system and how to program uh, this vehicle correctly and I will be following this um, exactly and um, one of the things that we need to do since we are reprogramming the TCM is we need to do a TCM uh, initial learning. A TCM is a transmission control module so we need to do a uh, initial a learning procedure for the transmission and uh, we need the transmission to be up to the proper temperature and um, we need to do that relearning and um, uh, to learn its shifts properly then uh, after that then we will get into the uh, SSPD6 which is another program going through the MDAR system it's pretty much the same thing and uh, this right here um, is a reminder that we are reprogramming the VCM, not the VMC. Okay, um, <laughs> so that's uh, apparently an issue that Mazda has had where technicians, um, they don't program the VCM, they try and program the VMC and it uh, messes things up. So uh, we're going to get over to the vehicle and we're going to get started on that right now. And uh, just to go over what this 6624E is, um, it uh, deals with a, um, a recall in which uh, the uh, master warning light will come on, check engine light may possibly come on with uh, code P0504 um, on certain uh, CX-9 vehicles uh, when driving the vehicle downhill slope, keeping your foot on the brake pedal and lightly depressing the pedal many times, the master warning light uh, and check engine light warning light uh, may turn on and it'll set the P0504 uh, under such conditions. The fail safe mode is activated on certain functions may be restricted. This condition will also continue until the vehicle is turned off. This it uh, affects uh, 33,054 vehicles in uh, U.S. and U.S. territories. And uh, what that uh, P0504 is, it's a uh, brake switch malfunction, basically. So uh, we're just programming the thing so that it will work properly with um, normal people that drive normal vehicles. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we need to put some power to this battery because um, before you can start doing any kind of programming you need to make sure that you got good power to the battery and as you can see this battery is tucked up way underneath there that's uh, you know a really nice design um, inspired by uh, BMW Volkswagen who knows what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the um, charger and I'm going to hook up to this positive cable right here and I'm going to hook up to the negative. All I need to do is supply power. This is a good battery so you cannot do a program on a on a bad battery. It will not uh, take a program. Matter of fact, uh, if you try and program with bad batteries, even if it lets you, uh, which the MDAR system doesn't, uh, it's pretty good about not letting you try and charge a are, are uh, trying to do a reprogram on any system in, um, um, in any vehicle um, unless you got a good uh, battery uh, so but if you did try and do that and it allowed you to do it and for some reason the battery failed the uh, program will fail and it uh, once uh, that happens then it's, it's no good that uh, the module would have to be replaced um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this system up right here 
and I'm going to go over to this reflash. It says reflash right there. And that's going to provide uh, power, uh, enough power to the vehicle um, to do the program. And it'll remain on the entire time while we're uh, doing the reprogram. Of course, once we uh, replace or reprogram the the TCM, we need to do the transmission learning. Uh, we don't have to have it hooked up, but it's not gonna it's not gonna bother it because we're gonna have to start the vehicle. And um, just so you all know, um, this is not a, a PHEV, um, but if you had uh, one of these uh, CX90s that was a PHEV and you wanted to start the engine for whatever reason, let it warm up, um, maybe after doing an oil change in your driveway or something like that, uh, you just open the hood. Um, those vehicles, you uh, start them up and they go into ready mode, but the engine's not running. And if you want the, uh, the engine to run and keep running, open the hood up. It'll keep the engine running. So that's, that's a little tip for you. So I'm going to get this, this hooked up and uh, get onto that programming. Okay, so I got the battery hooked up there and I have this thing going into reflash mode and it is supplying power uh, it's 14.52 volts uh, 24.5 amps um, and that right there will um, keep it keep the battery good while we do this program and I already have the MDAR system set up right here this is the MDAR system it's for Mazda diagnostic and repair software and um, I've already checked the codes in it and everything, and that's why we got all these systems are green. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, these uh, basically are all the systems in the vehicle, and uh, everything is in green. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and turn the key on. Hit that twice. Ignition is on. Make sure the headlights turn off. Look at this suede, look at that. Yeah, that, that's soft. Yeah, there's no way that I could uh, deal with that in my own vehicle, it would get messed up. We got suede on the door card too. So what I'm gonna do is go through this and the first thing that they want us to do is we need to go to the start button. We've already done that. Go through the thing. We, we, this is what we're looking at right here. We need to go to the toolbox, the software updates, and um, get started with that. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's turn this light off. So I'm going to go over here to the toolbox and go to software update. And right over here, I'm going to click run and what we're looking for is um, select a required module on ECU programming screen uh, PCM the powertrain control module so um, that is going to program everything so let me scroll through here and find the PCM there it is right there. I'm going to click on that. And it is checking the versions. So it's uh, checking the current version and the required version. And um, they are different. Um, it also is programming the TCM. Right? So I'm going to hit next and it's going to download. So uh, have you checked the dealer letter? So it's asking me these questions. Do you understand the work that is involved? Yes, I did read the bulletin, so hopefully I understand. I'm um, gonna hit next. And it is downloading the reflash. And it wants me to make sure that the ignition is in the on position. Engine should be off, ready off. So I'm gonna click on that because it is off. Uh, battery voltage, disconnect the charger connector, oh, wait 10 seconds, okay. So uh, my battery voltage is good. Battery voltage uh, is on the charger, yes. Uh, PC power supply, um, yes, uh, I do have a power supply hooked up right here to the... 
So, uh, so this isn't going to die on me while I'm doing it. And it just wants to make sure I go through all those checks. So now it's just uh, running, updating the software. So it's just a matter of sitting around, uh, letting it do its thing. And meanwhile, the key is on, but it looks like everything is black. It's like, what happened? Did it die? No, that's just the way it is. Um, the audio unit is still showing something, but everything on the cluster is completely black. And I have my interface, the uh, VCM2 interface uh, hooked up to the data link connector right here. And of course, this cable runs all the way to this PC laptop. And we are already 47% in. So let's just uh, let this finish. Okay, and you can see that it has completed. And, and it also uh, collected diagnostic information and uh, the information uh, has been collected because we are going to have to send that to Mazda. So uh, we're going to hit next. And it's showing the results, results of the writing. If you know what any of that stuff means, uh, it's done. Uh, um, so uh, we can just hit finish here and it takes us back to the other screen where we can do some more um, software updates or, or whatever we need to do. Uh, and this thing, after programming this, after completion of the software, uh, the current software version has shown, it, it, it showed us all that. Um, calibration files and, and stuff like that. Now we need to do the TCM initial learning procedure after TCM is programmed. So um, switch, the, switch the ignition on, apply the brake pedal, shift the selector to park range, of course it is, and uh, put on the emergency brake. Uh, we need to get the transmission uh, up to temperature, uh, 45 degrees. Um, Celsius to 105 degrees Celsius, although it tells you that um, uh, after it begins, it may drop to 44 degrees Celsius and the learning may stop uh, or be interrupted. So you need to raise the temperature uh, to 50 degrees Celsius. Why don't they just tell us 50 degrees to Celsius uh, to 105? And uh, basically that's 122 uh, degrees Fahrenheit to 221 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, we'll start the initial learning which is going to be uh, using the uh, MDAR system right here. Uh, so let's uh, start the vehicle up and let's um, get the transmission warmed up. I did have it running earlier, just so we wouldn't have to sit through that. Uh, let me start it up. I gotta turn it off. Okay, I got it running now. So let's see where we are with this. So I can go into the data logger system right here and um, I should be able to uh, check the data logger. Uh, I'm going to run that and original setup. 
I am looking for the TCM because I want to see what the transmission uh, fluid temperature is. So right there is TCM. Let's select that. And uh, this is the way you get into the data logger for uh, the MDAR system. So uh, you find the TCM. Just type in TCM right there. There it is. I select it. Oops. And of course, I accidentally selected the wrong thing. Let's. Uh, Select the TCM, and I'm looking for the TFT, which is transmission fluid temperature. Uh, so I typed in TFT, and there it is right there. Click on it, and moves over to this section, and this is the section that we're looking at. So I'm just gonna hit start right here. And the only thing I'm looking at is the transmission fluid temperature, and there it is, 128 degrees Fahrenheit. And what do we need? We needed uh, 122 to 221, so it's good. Um, so I can back out of this. And uh, let's see what we need to do. So connect the MD, MDS, so MDAR system, if it was disconnected for any reason. No, it wasn't. Um, open the hood, this is where it tells you open the hood uh, to ensure the engine starts and uh, the engine runs. Um, switch ignition on, engine off. So I'm going to turn the engine off and hit that button twice. Turn the headlights off and uh, ignition is on. Uh, perform the following procedure. We need to uh, basically get back into the system, go into toolbox, uh, go into work support and uh, transmission transaxle and uh, press the uh, run for initial learning. So we are going to go into the toolbox, which we are right there. We're in toolbox. And uh, Press the work support icon, which is this uh, little car with this uh, wrench above it. And we're looking for uh, to run the initial learning of AT um, automatic transmission. Uh, so I do not know where this is at. Uh, here's transmission, transaxle, and right there is initial learning of AT. So I come all the way over here and I'm gonna hit that run button. Uh, always carry out the functions according to the things that they say. Don't do anything else. Don't walk away and have a sandwich. Uh, do not uh, step on the accelerator, start the engine. Um, okay, always carry out. Uh, this procedure takes about 17 minutes to complete. Uh, perform the work after uh, checking neighboring neighbor. So it it's basically telling you that the uh, the vehicle may take off on its own. You want to make sure you got the brake on. Um, make sure that there's nobody around you that's going to get run over. Uh, do not step on the accelerator pedal during the function practices. Start engine and refer to workshop manual. Okay. So. Do not press on the accelerator during this function. Start the engine, then hit next. So I am going to start the engine. Pull this over here. I keep my foot on the brake. And I hit next. As the engine's RPM, over 100 RPM, yes it is. Uh, ATF temperature is good. It knows it, selected level is in park. Wheels block, sure. My foot is on the brake. I am going to hit next. And it is doing the procedure right now. And I don't know if you can hear that, but the, the um, RPM just came up. So we're sitting at about 1500 RPM. And it's moving back and forth. 
I can hear stuff clicking. I could feel the the vehicle. I could feel the vehicle jolting a little bit, you know, and it's, it's clicking. The transmission's doing transmission things, you know. It's just that you know, automagical shifting stuff, you know. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, I have not shifted anything. But if you look at this, it shows that we're in drive, right? And I have the thing in park. So it's, uh, it's doing its own thing. So you can imagine, you know, this is probably why you want to make sure that your neighbor is standing in front of the vehicle or whatever. You know, I feel the thing is jolting. It feels like we're jolting and uh, drive and reverse and drive and reverse. And we're sitting at about 1200 RPM right now. And we're only 7% through it. Seven, eight percent now. RPMs are coming up. We're probably about sixteen hundred, and there it jumps back down. So it's going to go through this for a while, and um, we'll just uh, let it do its thing and um, see what happens. Like it says, could take seventeen minutes. Uh, so looks like I'm going to be here for a while. And once we're done with this uh, programming of the TCM, or relearning the uh, transmission uh, shift uh, is actually what it's doing, uh, so that you get a good, nice, smooth shift between gears. Um, and it has to be done anytime. Uh, and from what I know, you know any vehicle, uh, not just Mazda, but any vehicle that uh, you reprogram the transmission control module you have to go through this type of learning process and if it's not just this then it's also uh, driving it on the road and within you know certain parameters uh, bringing it up to a certain rpm in drive or first gear shifting it manually to second gear on an automatic transmission you know stuff like that and bring it to a stop you know put it in reverse park drive you know and uh, back and forth um, so uh, let's uh, get through this and uh, once this is done then uh, we'll get on to the next part which is the special service program uh, SSP D6 okay look at this it's this thing's getting violent I don't know if you can hear that I'm only 51% uh, oh no it just said 51% and then now it says complete so I guess it's done it said 51% I mean a second ago now it says that it's complete following operation not performed learning value not been memorized uh, memorized memorized it says memorized uh, turn the main uh, power off, switch off Remove the MMDS and close all the doors and the hood. And then, um, uh, let me move this. Uh, wait five minutes without operating the vehicle during this time. Do not remove the battery terminals uh, or anything like that. Okay, so I am going to turn it off. And I need to move this thing out of the way. I think my foot was stuck on the brake. It's been there so long. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to disconnect this. This says to disconnect it. I'm disconnecting it. And close all the doors and the hood. It says wait five minutes without operating the vehicle during this time. Do not remove the battery terminals or perform lock or unlock operations. So I need to stop this because I gotta get my cables out of there. Do you wanna stop the charging? Yes. Okay, I'll wait.
waiting on that. And while I'm waiting, okay, that's done. Get my cables out of there. Just for now, because we're gonna have to use them again for the next section. So I'm just going to set this aside. Get my lights out of here and close the hood. I don't know if you guys notice this. This hood, it, it's high. It goes way up there. It's way out of the way. I gotta go to the side to grab it. So there it is. So now we wait five minutes. Okay, we're back. It's been well over five minutes. You know, I had to go get some coffee. But I got the um, you know hood back open here. I got the um, connectors back connected up and I am going to start this as uh, cold cranking amps is 550 done reflash start and that will start providing uh, power to the system again so we can go through the next the next program and then we also need to send ODR data so we'll get to that too uh, see right here it says uh, vehicle disconnected so I need to connect the vehicle back up and get this plugged in to the data link connector is right there just in case y'all didn't know it's I don't know if you can see it, it's right there so plug that in And everything's fine. That um, so we can move on to the next step. I just hit next right here, and of course that jumps right out of there. I need to get my paperwork. And what we're going to do is go. Oh well, actually we need to need to check the the codes. You need to make sure there aren't any codes. It says uh, to verify that the TCM uh, doesn't set a code uh, P06B8. Uh, make sure that that hasn't been stored. I'm guessing that will store if it didn't actually do its learning process. So um, what's kind of weird about this is, see if I can show this to you. Um, it says that if it is stored, displayed uh, switch to ignition off uh, main power off and repeat the procedure from step 18 that's got to be a typo because we're on step 16 there is no 18 maybe they meant uh, from 8 which is basically the beginning and I'm pretty sure that's what that means so anyway um, what I'm gonna do is turn the key on hit that button twice Turn the headlights off, we don't need those. And I'm going to check codes. I'll go right up here to quick check. And of course it shows everything in green. I'm gonna hit this little recycle button and it is going to go through all the codes and check them. And um, it, um, it does a lot better than the IDS. The IDS uh, is a very, 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 and I mean very slow. Uh, so this one that, That's it. It's checked them all. Everything's in green. So it's all good. So now we can move on So we don't have any codes in the um, Temperature control module system uh, So we're moving on to the SSPD6 So SSPD6 is to identify the vehicle. We've already done that uh, We're gonna go into uh, VCM to reprogram VCM so basically the same area that we were before we're gonna go back into that I'm gonna go into this toolbox right here and no I uh, want to go yeah right here software upgrade that's what I'm looking for so I'm gonna click on software upgrade I'm gonna go over here and hit run and then VCM, that is VCM. VCM is what we need. VCM, not VMC, VCM. So just double check, it is VCM. 
so <laughs> I'm gonna click on that and it's going to check check the current version required version and I don't know if you can see it, but it is different 66s01-d uh, 66x um, s01-e so uh, and only 1.95 megabytes so I'm gonna hit next so that we can download and uh, of course it's asking me the same stuff have you checked the dealership letter do you know what you're doing um, yeah as far as, as far as I know I, I know um, I don't know maybe maybe I, I don't know um, and then uh, we're going through the same thing um, the check the engine is engine is off ready on um, and yeah the engine's off ignition is turned on uh, battery voltage is good I got the thing hooked up um, so check all those uh, PC power supply yes we're still plugged in right here um, hit next and it is running through the process so it is updating the software so we shall see how long this takes see if I can and it's going pretty good it's, it's pretty fast 12% um, uh, sometimes this uh, takes a couple different sweeps. Um, I don't know if you noticed it on the other one. Of course, the other one, uh, we were reprogramming more than just one module. So this is only reprogramming one module. So um, we're going to do this one program of the module and uh, we're going to check the codes. And after that, we need to go to ODR manual uh, up update and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so you can see that it, it is complete. <clears throat> so <clears throat> there are two portions there. One was a program and the other one was uh, collecting of this data and the data has been collected and uh, we will get into that next. Uh, so the ECM is reprogrammed and there's a bunch of gibberish stuff as to what happened. Um, hit next and show that I am finished. Okay, now it has collected information from those programs. Now we need to go in and make sure that this data, this uh, ODR data, um, oh, I, I don't know what ODR stands for anymore. <laughs> At one point, you know, I was told, um, it says to um, failure to perform an ODR manual update will result in uh, claim denial. So this is uh, under warranty. So if uh, I don't do it, and the customer takes the vehicle, then we uh, possibly need to get the customer back just to get the ODR data and uh, send that uh, up to Tomaza, Tomaza's cloud. So they can see that we've actually done this uh, reprogramming, all these reprogrammings on here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, go follow this, this right here and uh, make sure that um, we have actually uh, collected the ODR data and it has been sent up to uh, the Mazda cloud. So uh, upload ODR data, um, check for ODR collection, 
uh, result after programming all required modules uh, with vehicle verification. Um, so this is this is how we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to go over to to data logging. Okay, what I'm actually looking for is the vehicle history. Um, that's, that's right, so that's right here on the bottom. Vehicle history, I am going to run that. And it shows everything that I've done. Uh, I mean, everything that I've done in here. Um, even uh, looking at the data logger, and the data logger is, uh, we're checking the um, the uh, transmission uh, temperature, and I went in and checked the transmission temperature. Uh, shows that I did a software update. Uh, so this data logger was earlier when I was uh, running the vehicle. I went into data logger, checked the transmission temperature, get it up to some temperature before we even went through any of this. Um, here's a uh, software update. Here's a data logger when it went back in and uh, checked the temperature. Um, here's the AT relearning and then a final software update. It says right here that the uh, status is uh, success. So, um, and uh, it even shows the MDARS uh, start time and uh, pretty much everything, all the information, you know, that uh, Mazda needs to. Um, to make sure that I actually did this properly. Um, so that this last part uh, is collecting the diagnostic information from the vehicle. If for some reason it showed that it was un unsuccessful, but it was successful, which means that it was sent up to the cloud already. So uh, this is just in case it wasn't, this is a manual way of uh, collecting the, uh, the diagnostic information and then sending it back up. Uh, I'm gonna let it finish its process because the key is on. I still got the battery thing hooked up, so no problem there. Uh, but really didn't need to do this last part. So um, that's pretty much it. I only have one more um, uh, recall to do. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it. I have one more recall to do, and that has to do with the uh, steering uh, issue, which uh, I've already done that, just like I talked about before. So if you haven't seen that, um, you might uh, go and check it out, and I'll put it in the end screen here. Um, and uh, YouTube shows that 86% uh, of y'all are not subscribed, so why don't you just you know give me that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. I got a lot, lot more stuff, you know, going on. Uh, we don't just work on Mazdas. We don't just work on Mazdas and Kias. Uh, we work on anything that comes in the door. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's one going to be coming up uh, pretty soon that uh, I have been waiting to work on for a long time. And uh, that is uh, basically my drag and drive car. So uh, just a little bit of hint of what's coming up. So um, hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll see you in the next one.